All right, I am pleased to be joined by Stacy Bauman of the Gridiron Icon um, Football Podcast. How is it going, Stacy? It's going great. Great to be here. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Thanks again for coming on. You know, it kind of it took a little while, but we finally got to go. And again, thanks for coming on. And um, before we start really talking about the NFL season so far and what a crazy week week one was, but do you want to tell us more about your podcast, how we can get it, all that good stuff? Yeah, thank you. Appreciate that. And it's great to be here, JJ. Uh, Gridiron Icon podcast. It's fairly new. We really unveiled it in 2020. And it's, it's, it's a bit of a deeper dive into the world of football. We tend to focus, as you might imagine, mostly on the NFL, which we love and have a passion for. I've been a Rams fan since the 70s. But we stray into college football and even the high school level of football. We really, it's a celebration of the game of football. And some of the legends, people that are associated with the game, whether it's a player, or a coach, an agent, and really kind of go on a deep dive. If you've ever seen James Lipton's Inside the Actor Studio uh, on the Hollywood side of things, it's it's a similar format except for football. And we try to go beyond the, the typical media questions that everybody gets every week, the canned answers. We want to We want to have some fun with it. Yeah, and again, um, I saw your uh, podcast. I think it was through Instagram or something like that. So, again, it was great to see that. Again, I always like talking to fellow podcasters. That's mostly what our show is now. Our pod is talking to other podcasters. So, again, thanks for coming on. Um, So let's talk about week one. Let's first start off with the Thursday night game between the Cowboys and Buccaneers. That game was better than I thought. I thought the Cowboys would win by – or not the Cowboys. The Buccaneers would win by at least two touchdowns. However – Cowboys made it really tough. Dak Prescott played very well. What did you think about that game overall? That was a really entertaining game. Uh, Kind of focused almost solely on the Cowboys. Really concerned about that defense. I know, shocker. Uh, We were all concerned about it last year watching them. I don't know what's going on in the defensive backfield. And one of the things that stood out to me is I isolated. I watched the game live, and then I watched film afterwards was really the linebacker play. I really like where Micah Parsons may be going. I think he showed that he was a rookie in that game. He got lost a couple times in coverage and zone coverage. There was a couple shots on the Gronkowski touchdown where his head was on a swivel turning around trying to find him. I think Micah will be okay. But I got to tell you, I'm really concerned at this stage in the game with uh, Jalen Smith and Van Der Esch. They just don't seem to be developing. And both of them were such talented college guys you'd think that they'd have this dynamic linebacking core but it's early maybe that uh, they'll start to gel as the season goes on and then the other thing for me on the Dallas Cowboys is that's an explosive offense I thought you know Brady won the game but I thought that Dak Prescott won the night having him come back after the series of injuries he's had and then working off a bum shoulder to do what he did with CeeDee Lamb and Amari Cooper, and then Michael Gallup got hurt, which stinks. But they're a dynamic offense. There might be a little bit of a concern about Zeke at this point. He he did not show out like we would expect him to. But those are my biggest takeaways was what's going on on defense with the Cowboys again. And then, man, that offense, they, they may be in shootouts this year. Yeah, and I think a lot of people were saying that, or some people were saying that, a lot of people were saying that Dak Prescott played one of his best games of all time. I don't know if I can really say that. He did look really sharp, and yeah, that defense, I don't know, it feels like they've invested in a lot in that defense on the Cowboys' side, but yet they still haven't got much production. But, I mean, if you have a guy like Dak Prescott, I feel like for the most part, and plus you play in, one of the, in, in the worst division in football, so I feel like they could – possibly and I think that I don't know their schedule isn't that tough either because they didn't win their division last year so I or they got like they finished like second or I think they finished last or something like that so mm-hmm. I really think the Cowboys will pride it well I don't know, it just it depends I originally said the Giants were going to win the NFC East that's not looking great right now um <laughs> the Cowboys do have the most talented team I just don't know it's the Cowboys and I just don't trust them that's why I didn't pick them early but um, they look solid, or did you have anything to add to that? No, I agree with you. Uh, I think that the Cowboys, Cowboys are kind of a weird enigma to me. I I had them, at least early on, I'm going to stick with it. We'll see if that changes based on last night's game, and I'm sure you'll get to that. But I think the Cowboys have a ton of talent on both sides of the ball, but you don't see it gelling yet. You do on offense, the defense is going to be an issue. And then you got Washington. Philly shows out like none of us expected in week one. 
And then the Giants let one slip away last night. So I agree with you. Dallas is an interesting team. It's going to, they're always an, they they were on hard knocks. Now we're going to be sitting here watching to see what happens with Dak. And what's even weirder, too, is the Eagles, in my opinion, before the season, I thought they would be one of the worst teams in the league, but yet they were the only team in the NFC East to actually win. And Jalen Hurts played really well, and I know it's against the Falcons, but it's just like maybe the Eagles are better than we think. Maybe Jalen Hurts is the guy, even though it doesn't seem like the Eagles think he is. I don't know. There's just so many different – I mean, we're – or now we have an extra game this season, so there's a lot of things that can happen from here just even to October. So – I mean, there's a there are just. I think there's going to be a lot of shock, uh, shocking things in the NFL this year, and I just, it's going to be crazy. I feel like, and I don't know that NFC East is always hard to predict because of how bad it is. But I don't know. We'll we'll see what we'll see what happens down the line. Um, let's go to some Sunday games. The first game that I was stunned to see, and I watched this game for the most part, the whole game was the Bills and Steelers. The Bills were projected, and some people said they would be in the Super Bowl. And yet they got beat by the Steelers, who I think are mostly going to be relied on their defense. Uh, what happened to Buffalo on Sunday? Man, I got to tell you, that was that was probably one of the most shocking games of the week uh, for the Bills to lay an egg like that. I don't know. They're, they're another one of those teams that I don't think anybody should panic on. I think they probably laid a little bit of an egg coming in to their first game in front of the fans. I think that... Uh, Josh Allen is one of those dynamic playmakers that I I don't think anybody should be sleeping on him. The passing game obviously did not get going with Diggs. Uh, Cole Beasley, we won't go too deep on him and what's going on there. And then, you know, the Bills, for me, still have a big question mark in the running game. Like, where are they going to go there? They can't expect Josh Allen to be running around, taking those kind of hits, or being just a strictly a mobile quarterback the way he was. And then, to me, the thing – with the Bills is you still have to kind of wonder where that defense is going. They've got players at key positions, but they should not have allowed the Steelers to do anything that they did last Sunday. uh, Even though the Steelers have some pretty skilled positions themselves at the wide receiver with Juju and Claypool. And of course, Najee Harris, the rookie running back. But I think that the Bills just laid an egg. I'm not overly concerned about them. I think they've got talent at the right positions. I still see them going into week two as a team that people should fear. I just think they came out kind of flat. Yeah. And again, there's so much uh, expectation on the Bills, and we haven't really seen that with Buffalo since you had to go back to the 90s. Even last year, not that many people expected them to go as far as they did. Um, So I think, and on the other side, I think Pittsburgh's defense is really good. Like, I think they have the top three defense, their offense. Uh, it's iffy, but I think their defense is definitely going to be winning them a lot of games this year instead of their offense. Um, another upset that I thought, or not necessarily an upset, but the way it ended, the Titans and Cardinals, the Cardinals just a blib, or a, I can't even th- say it right now, they just destroyed the Titans. And what do you think was wrong with the Titans on Sunday? Man, I got to tell you, that was another mind blower. There were several. It's a typical week one in the NFL, right? Everything you picked and thought was going to happen didn't. Man, the Cardinals are impressive. I, I think Cliff Kingsbury's a little bit, his seat's a little bit warm going into this season that he's got to start to produce because they went out and just loaded up on free agents, particularly on the defensive side of the ball. Then Chandler Jones says, I want out. I don't expect Chandler Jones to get five sacks every week, even though he's really talented. But the Cardinals on offense are explosive and it all starts with Kyler Murray. I mean, he is a great football player. And I think that What really impressed me about Sunday is he didn't do it with his legs as much as he has in the past. He was throwing the ball. Anytime he got Hopkins and now A.J. Green, and and of course he hit Christian Kirk for the touchdown, the Cardinals look like a a lot of what you'd expect from a Cliff Kingsbury team coming out of college with his spread offense. Uh, And then they've got the running backs to back it up with Chase Reynolds and James Conner whenever the defense starts to sleep on the run. So... I thought the Cardinal game, as a guy who loves the Rams, that's that's my team. I'm I'm not shy about it. I'm watching all those teams in the NFC West, and I'm looking at the Cardinals going, good grief, man. But I don't know about you. What do you think about the linebacker play, too? Some of those guys, those really fast guys like Simmons out of Clemson, who's had a year now to digest the system, they seem to be flying around with a lot more confidence on Sunday. And, and, a, and I can speak to the Titans, if you like, as well. I, I was concerned last year about the defense. I continue to be concerned about the defense. 
that defense looks really bad. It just does not look like a Mike Vrabel defense. Yeah, and I think, I mean, they're mostly relied on Derrick Henry and they also they have Julio, or they brought in Julio Jones, they have A.J. Brown. But yeah, that that team, I feel like if their offense doesn't get going, they could be in some trouble. And I thought the Titans could possibly make the Super Bowl this year after adding Julio Jones, but it seemed like they might have taken that step back. I understand week one. However, I don't really know what to say about the, really the linebackers for the Titans, but yeah, that defense definitely needs some work. And you look at the offensive line, they got dominated. I mean, Chandler Jones, five sacks, that's impressive. Uh, Taylor Lewan's supposed to be one of those better tackles. He did not look good. I understand he came back from an injury from last year, but he did not perform like he normally does. So, I mean, maybe the Cardinals are just that good. I mean, adding J.J. Watt was, I thought, more of a luxury than anything. They didn't really need to add him that much. I think we needed to add some more, maybe some more offensive talent. But, I mean, both sides looked really good. So, maybe the Cardinals will be really good this year. I just don't know. I don't really trust Cliff Kingsbury that much because when he had Patrick Mahomes at Texas Tech and Evan Ingram, they still didn't make the a bowl game. I think they made the bowl game once, which still really shocks me to this day. But, I mean, I think we do have to worry about the Titans. I understand it's week one. It's overreaction, and anything's possible now. But I just think that the Cardinals are good. The Titans need a lot of work, and um, – I don't know. It could be a long season for the Titans, even though I think they're going to win the AFC South. Maybe the Texans shock everybody. I don't think the Jaguars are winning that division. Um, I know you just mentioned uh, Jared, or you're, you're a Rams fan, and we'll talk about the Rams and Bears just a, in just a little bit. But Jared Goff, the former quarterback for the Rams, or, and he's with the Lions now, he performed solid despite what he had to deal with, and they made a comeback. But, I mean, overall, did you expect the Lions – or were, how impressed with Jared Goff were you in that game versus the Niners? Man, I love this subject. Great question, man. I, You know, the narrative around Jared Goff is one of the most bizarre things the last couple of years. I understand he didn't have his best season last year before McVay uh, traded him to Detroit. But Jared Goff has been to a Super Bowl. Jared Goff has done some things in his four- or five-year career that nobody else has done, including two Pro Bowls. The narrative around him is bizarre. I saw what I thought I would see on Sunday, which is, you know, and I want to be come out and say, Jared Goff isn't Peyton Manning. He's not John Elway. Okay. But he's a very good quarterback. If you build around him and you put him in the system and he's tough as nails, man, I thought he played really well. Of course, the pick six was a disaster. I think the game somewhat turned on that. Although I don't think Detroit's defense is going to stop a nosebleed. I think he would have just been in a shootout, but Jared showed, football and the NFL football fans, really what he's all about. Has anybody in recent years seen Detroit fight like that to come back and almost make that a game? I mean, Goff led them down till the final play. They were in that game. They did not give up. So I thought Jared played, played really well. I mean, three touchdowns over 300 yards passing. Folks, take a look at that wide receiving core. There's no big names on that. TJ Hawkinson is a stud. So they're going to develop. But I thought Jared was impressive. And I think he's got a big a big matchup coming this this Monday night. Yeah, and I, as you mentioned, Jared Goff, he kind of played similar to how Stafford used to play in all those years in Detroit, where he had to make a comeback. Yeah. He had to throw, I think, what, he threw for 353 yards or something, three TDs. So he performed well, but, I mean, he just doesn't have a lot of talent to work with. And to be honest with you, I don't think he's going to be in Detroit for very long because I think the Lions want to start fresh and get a new quarterback, maybe a Sam Howell or Spencer Radler, if they get a top three pick, which I think is going to end up happening. Um, it's, it's similar to what you saw with Jacksonville last year. They had a solid quarterback in Gardner Minshew, and then they just said, you know what, let's just start from scratch. Let's get Trevor Lawrence, and let's eventually trade Minshew. But, I mean, I, that's what I'm seeing with Detroit. It just – I, I do feel for Goff, but like what Stafford used to have to deal with in Detroit, watching him all the time. And again, you not a lot of people, if you're not a Lions fan, you don't watch a lot of Detroit games. The only time you really get to see him is on Thanksgiving, and they're getting beat, and they're playing usually a really good team, and they're usually getting beat by 10 or 20 points in the second half, so Stafford has to make that comeback. And that's basically what you saw with Jared Goff versus the Niners on Sunday. So, I mean, I was impressed with him. And then, of course, on the other side, Trey Lance throws a touchdown pass in his first attempt, which I thought was pretty great. Um, when do you see Trey Lance? Or do you, do you think Trey Lance will get a start this year for the Niners? Oh, I think it's coming. Uh, I, it's, it's hard to take anything away from the way Garoppolo played. 
on Sunday. He, he looked pretty good. He looked really good. I think that Shanahan's probably being pretty smart with Trey Lance and then mixing him in early. I didn't love the play calls. I thought it was great that he, that he scored, of course, but there was a couple of play calls where he, it was pretty apparent to me that Trey Lance had one of two decisions, handoff or run, handoff or run. A couple of times he got stuffed in the backfield. But my guess is you cannot mortgage draft picks in your future the way they did to keep Trey Lance on the bench all year. I too think particularly if Garoppolo struggles at all over the next three to four games. I think we're going to see Trey Lance sooner than later, unless they're in the thick of a Super Bowl run and everything's going well. I Yeah, I think Trey Lance, you see the physical tools. He reminds me uh, a lot of a, uh, ah, his brain just, my brain just uh, checked out there on the quarterback that he, oh, Dante Culpepper, excuse me. He reminds me a lot of a young Dante Culpepper. He's athletic, he's big, he can run, he can pass. I think he'll start sooner than later, but only if Garoppolo starts to struggle. I, was, I think they'll be mixing him in more into the offensive flow of a game, like Shanahan kind of previewed this last week. And Jimmy Garoppolo is kind of like a Jared Goff type of quarterback. Um, he's a solid yeah. quarterback, but I feel like, I don't know, people do take him for granted, but I just think that Jimmy Garoppolo is a little bit limited. And I think you could definitely see that um, in the Super Bowl, at least, you could tell Kyle Shannon wasn't exactly confident because I think at the end they were tied 10-10 or something, and they tried to go deep to George Kittle and it didn't work, and then they just decided to run it. So I feel like that's one of the reasons why they drafted Trey Lance. And, I don't know how well Trey Lance is going to be. It's so hard to predict, especially with the rookie quarterbacks. I mean, who would have thought that before the 2018 draft that Josh Rosen would be the worst quarterback of all, or the worst quarterback of that draft? I mean, and then who thought that, you know, what happened with Jared Goff and Carson Wentz, that whole situation? Just you really never know about a quarterback until it, until a few years down the road. So that's why I think you need to not to judge a guy. But I do think Trey Lance will eventually get the job. I just don't know when when the Niners will pull the trigger. So um, I'll tell you, my, uh, my two quarterbacks come out of this draft. I'm not shy about it. You can listen to it on the Gridiron Icon podcast. The two guys that I thought were going to do really well early in the NFL were Justin Fields. Uh, I would have taken him number one over Lawrence. People just can't believe I say that. And Mac Jones. Uh, he comes from a pro-ready system under Nick Saban. Belichick did his, home, Belichick did his homework. Um, I'm worried, like you said, you brought up some past names over the last five, six years. I'm concerned about guys like Trey Lance, uh, Zach Wilson. My God, he was getting killed on Sunday with that. And that offensive line was supposed to be better. And then Trevor Lawrence has got a learning curve. Yeah, I mean, this is his first time. This is him and Urban Myers, both of them, their first time that they're really with a bad team. And they actually have to face some adversity because – I think it was the first time that Trevor Lawrence lost a opening game because I think in high school and college, he, of course, he dominated in college. High school, I think, was the same way. So it was it was really interesting when that stat came out because Trevor Lawrence and Urban Meyer both, I think, are going to be – it's going to be a long season because there's a chance that the Jaguars could be the worst team in football next year. And it won't be their fault. It's just they have nothing really around them, and it's going to take years. And that's kind of the question I have with Urban Meyer because I don't know if he's going to stay very long because – if he doesn't succeed this year, does, what, does he take the USC job? I mean, there's a lot of things that could happen. So, I mean, oh. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you, JJ. I, I don't think he's an NFL guy. I think we've seen this before with Spurrier. We've seen it before with Saban, mm -hmm. that it, the dynamic is just significantly different. And he, he put way too much on Trevor Lawrence in that game. I think he threw the ball almost 50 times. And James Robinson, who was a 1,000-yard rusher last year, he touched the ball like five times on Sunday. That's not that's not a recipe for success, Urban. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the Jaguars have some decent skill position. It's just their offensive line is just horrible. And you could see that in the preseason <sighs> where he literally was running from his life the whole time. So, I don't know. I feel like the yeah. Jaguars, it's, it's going to be a long season for them. Um, another game, too, that I was just – I mean, the outcome just I – was, I was just stunned. The Packers and Saints. It seems like Aaron Rodgers <sighs> is just completely checked out. And – I'm not a huge Aaron Rodgers fan. I think the way the whole offseason worked was just – I understand the Packers were not the good guys, the organization, but I feel like Aaron Rodgers was a bad guy too. So, I mean, he just – he looked completely checked out in that game. I mean, 
Do you think Aaron Rodgers is actually trying with the Packers? God, that's a great question, man. This has been such hot debate since that game was mind blowing to watch. Watched every snap. You know, honestly, you know, and it's it's very cliche, but you'll talk to some of the greats that play the game. You, you get a lot from looking into a guy's eyes. And Aaron Rodgers looked just vacant on Sunday. He looked like a guy to me. And by the way, I want to go on record. I'm a huge fan of his. I think he's one of the most talented, physical quarterbacks I've ever watched in this old guy's lifetime next to Dan Marino. But here's my concern with him. And I think you're leading that, leaning that way too. He looked like a guy that would rather be in Hawaii with his beautiful fiance singing Taylor Swift songs like he was posting on Instagram or hosting Jeopardy. He's lost a lot of weight, man. He looked really lean to me. And all that water under the bridge, I mean, it's not like it's cleaned up, folks. He's Green Bay's a unique situation, fan-owned team in a small market. Uh, and he's gone on record that he's not thrilled. This is a one-year deal. You know, him and Devontae are posting all this, you know, last dance stuff. They got to show up and play on Sunday. And, yeah, he looked like a guy that was not prepared at all for what the Saints were throwing at him. He, There were times he looked like he just wanted to go, you know, go back to Hawaii and hang out. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I saw, too. And a lot of analysts were saying the same thing almost, just as like they were kind of, you know, kind of pointing that direction. And I feel like the whole – like he could – I think the way he says it, like, it's the last dance. I don't think it's the last dance because MJ and Scotty Pippen got six championships together. Devontae Adams and Rodgers, they haven't won anything together. Now Rodgers won a Super Bowl. But, right. I mean, like I understand the Packers have not done the best job surrounding them with talent. But according to Pro Football Focus, they have the sixth most talented roster. And if he goes somewhere else, it's gonna he's going to be in a worse situation. So I just think that really like the Packers are not the good guys here. But neither is Rogers, so I think that both sides are both sides are bad, and no one's really good. And I feel like people either paint someone good or someone bad. It's, I feel like both sides are wrong. But I mean, there's a long season, and maybe it's different because they have a game against the Lions that I feel like is more of a tune-up game. I'm actually going to be going to that game, so that's going to be nice. really interesting to watch. Yeah. So, um, and if we go to some other games, or did you have anything else you wanted to add to that? Well, I'll tell you, I think you're spot on on your assessment with Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. I, I feel like I'm a little kid living in a house with two parents that are going through a divorce. And it, and you can feel that. I mean, it's just you feel it in the locker room. You, you feel it on the football field. There's just the vibe is different. I don't think that can be denied. It doesn't look pretty. I'm not panicking. Aaron Rodgers is a ridiculous talent. So is Devontae Adams. I agree with your assessment on the talent. I never understood his narrative that he doesn't have talent there. He's got a ton of talent. You no, know, Balaga was out injured, but he's got Aaron Jones, he's got Devontae Adams. I mean, come on. He's got talent, and he should have beaten the Buccaneers last year, but that defense killed him. But I agree with you, man. The vibe is different. Stay tuned. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think there's this could be very interesting the way it goes, and I keep on saying interesting, but it's going to be just – I mean, we don't know what's going to happen. I feel like Rodgers isn't going to be in a green and yellow uniform next year, and, I mean, there, there could be a chance that he retires too. I wouldn't be stunned. So, I mean, we'll see what ends up happening. All right, so we get to the Sunday night game between the Bears and Rams, and the Rams just – they just – they toyed with the Bears, I felt like. And Stafford, you could see he was actually happy to be in L.A. And Sean McVay, he was he was thrilled too because he finally has – well, not finally has, but he has someone he can relate to. Um, what did you think of Stafford's performance in the whole game to be – or just the whole game? Man, it was everything is advertised, you know, and I, and I'm on record as somebody that was a little brokenhearted by the Jared Goff trade. I, I thought we gave up a little too early, but you can't deny Matt Stafford's amazing. You, what you picked up on is fact. I don't know if you saw his wife, uh, Kelly tweeting after the game that she hasn't seen her husband that happy to play football in many years. And you could just see the joy, man, between him and McVay's a young guy. He's, I, he might even be younger than Stafford. I should check, but. Stafford looked amazing. The deep ball is back. He took several shots to Van Jefferson. He didn't even get a chance to hit Deshaun Jackson yet. Just wait for that with that speed. Uh, the Rams are going to be, and it's great to be able to say that, they're going to be a problem. That offense is amazing. I, too, I think they mess with the Bears, which are a whole other conversation. But the Rams offense, folks, is going to be lethal. And several of those guys didn't even get a chance to shine. He hit Robert Woods right at the end 
with that touchdown. And Woods was kind of quiet the rest of the game. He hit Cooper Cup. I mean, mixes it up. What a talent, man. Yeah, that he's got Tyler Higby, and then you mentioned Deshaun Jackson. Yep. They also have Tutu Atwell out of Louisville, which is just a similar guy to Deshaun Jackson. You didn't see him at all, but I think he's going to be – he's going to probably play toward the end of the season. That's going to be another target for Stafford to throw to. So, And the Bears, I feel like – Andy Dalton, I don't think, had a terrible game. I thought he did well for what he had, but maybe – I don't know. The Bears, outside of Cleo Mack, I mean, maybe the Bears' defense should be in concern because I felt like the offense did what they could. So, I mean – do we, I mean, is the Bears, do you think the Bears defense will be that great this year, or do you think they'll have a really bad season? God, that's a great question, man. I That was the, that was one of the shocks for me about Chicago, because half of that Chicago Bear defense, they're ex-Rams, Robert Quinn, Marquis Christian. Uh, there was guys all over the field that were ex-Rams. I thought the strength of the Bears was going to be their defense this year. And Rob Havenstein at right tackle completely shut Khalil Mack out of the game. He was almost non-existent. And now, you know, we're not going to judge on pressures. I agree with you. Uh, Eddie Jackson was missing some oh, tackles yeah. in the open field. You know, now this is week one again. Don't hit the panic button, folks. But I, I think your question is a good one. What's going on at the Bears defense? I thought that was going to be their strength. It did not show up. Uh, it, and I got to tell you, the highlight for me was Aaron Donald goes all night. He actually missed a couple easy sacks. And then he's got, look, I'm not going to be shut out. And towards the end of the game, here he comes and he gets Andy Dalton. So, yeah, Bears defense is going to be interesting to watch. But let's face it, man, they got to get Justin Fields in the game. Yeah, I thought Fields played pretty well. I just don't think that Bears fans blame Andy Dalton because I thought he played all right. He's a serviceable quarterback. Yeah. I just, I, I understand yeah. that Justin Fields should be. And I agree with Fiel, or Dalton getting the start, but I think eventually, like in week four, week five, you should probably turn to Fields. I mean, maybe the defense plays better because they believe in him more, which, I mean, I wouldn't – like, I understand what they're going through because usually that's what happens. Usually a quarterback, it starts in the week four or five as a rookie. So, I mean, we'll see what happens. I mean, Aaron Dalton played very well too – or not Aaron Dalton. Aaron Donald played very well in the second half. He oh, got, yeah. I think, what, two sacks? And you could tell – Oh, yeah, like, he's a beast. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, I like what the Rams. Well, and it takes it takes really diehard football fans to to isolate and watch Aaron Donald on every play, folks. He is blowing up that offense every play. I mean, uh, Hall, Justin Hollins, our outside linebacker, had a career night with two sacks, folks. That's attributable to Aaron Donald because they've got a double and triple team, and those outside linebackers better get loose, you know, because he just blows up the line of scrimmage on every play. I want to ask you, if you don't mind, if the Bears lose again this week, is Justin Fields, are, are we getting closer and closer? Because I didn't think Andy Dalton was horrible either. I mean, yeah, actually had people dropping the ball. David Montgomery was fantastic at running back, actually concerned me. But what do you think, does, if they go 0-2, if they go 0-3, is Nagy having to push Fields in there, in your opinion? I think if they, if, I think definitely Justin Fields starts in week four if they start 0-3. 0-2, I could see both, but I think Dalton, I think Matt Nagy is very, like, he was, um, I think he was there with the Chiefs when they had Mahomes' his rookie year, and they sat him the whole year until yep. week 17. So I think he wants to have that type of, um, that type of like that type of coming in for Justin Fields. But I think if they start 0-2, I'll probably say Dalton starts. But if they start 0-3 or go 1-3, Justin Fields is coming in, in my opinion. I think the ownership yeah. or someone is going to tell him, you know, you got to start Justin Fields. This isn't – the Chiefs don't – or the Bears don't have a team like the Chiefs did a few years ago when Mahomes was a rookie. So I think I think if they start 0-3, definitely 0-2. Dalton probably still starts, but if it's 0-3, it's definitely going to be Justin Fields' time. So, I mean, that's just my opinion, but I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. Yeah, Dalton's not a bad quarterback. So, um, let's go into the next Monday night game between the Ravens and Raiders. A huge Lamar Jackson fan. I was super bummed the way it ended, but uh, what did you take away from the game from both sides? Yeah, first, I thought it was a great game. Um, I, I came into the game thinking the Ravens were going to roll them. So it was interesting to see those competitive. I want to tip my hat to Lamar. I mean, he's playing without two of his top running backs. Their defense lost a starting Pro Bowl corner. He still has problems with most of his receivers are number twos or number threes. The Sammy Watkins thing didn't work uh, as well as expected. Um, Hollywood Brown's still a stud. Look, folks, Lamar Jackson is a stud. I mean, even on the runs where he got loose, there were several right up the middle 
I, I won't even, I, I got hurt just watching him, you know, uh, the, the moves he had to make guys miss to pick up six, seven yards at the tail end of where you think he's going to slide. I thought that the Ravens, the Ravens do concern me. And we were talking before we jumped on the air that I'm a little concerned that he might be distracted with trying to cut himself that next big contract, but that's just a guy in the bleachers having a concern. Lamar Jackson's great. I do have concerns that he's hit the ceiling as a passer. And I don't know if that's fair, but he's, look, in the NFL, he's top three, four players that's must-watch football, and you never know what he's going to do. I was a little brokenhearted for him there at the end with the fumble. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think I'm a huge Lamar Jackson fan, so I might be a little biased, but I think people... You either like him or don't like him, and I just think that some people don't like Lamar because he's not a he's not a typical quarterback. Like, and they think that oh, mobile quarterbacks don't last as long. I mean, I could see him lasting ten or fifteen years, and that's still pretty long. Like, um, I just don't know why people like the Bill Polians of the world. They just think that oh, you got to be a pocket <laughs> passer, you can't be mobile. I just like no, you can be different as a quarterback. It's just and Lamar Jackson for the most part really hasn't taken any massive hits. His offensive line might not be as good this year as it's normally has been because you saw how Ronnie Stanley wasn't the same type of player. Maybe it's because the Raiders have a great pass rush, but I just think the Ravens, I mean, it's just Lamar Jackson is a different type of quarterback and he's so good. And like the Ravens need to get him a better one receiver. Yes, they have Mark Andrews, but he's a tight end. They need to find him a legitimate receiver. Hollywood Brown's solid. Sammy Watkins is decent, but they're number twos. They're not number ones. And maybe if they try to see if they can get like a DJ Chark, maybe – I don't think this is going to happen, but before the season started, Michael Thomas was in trade rumors. They just need to find someone to get a receiver. And, yeah, they looked into signing Juju Smith-Schuster and T.Y. Helton, but those guys are still number twos. They're not number ones. you, yeah. you got to find that legitimate receiver for them to throw to. But we'll see what ends up happening. <laughs> Art. Yeah, it's. Uh, I know that you're a, a big fan, so I was leaning on you uh, prior to going on the air too. That I just don't understand the Ravens, even in this year's draft. That this is clearly give Lamar a weapon, give him somebody that he ca that he can count on. You know, like a uh, DeAndre Hopkins, uh, like those types of players. Give him somebody that he can just trust because. Uh, He's an incredible athlete, man, and he's so good for the game and a good person. Uh, that they, it's a little intrigued. I, I'm assuming that they were really going to pound the rock before JK got hurt and then Gus Edwards, but, but you're, you nailed it. I think that he needs a number one and he, they just haven't gotten him one. And it, and this last draft was loaded mm -hmm. with wide receivers. I, I, I like the pick of Rashad Bateman, I think, but he's not going to be back till October, so maybe he'll be the number one receiver overall. But I think they should have looked at free agency, and they should have done what they normally don't like to do is spend money on a receiver. Like, I know, understand, and there might be some receivers that don't want to go to Baltimore because they run too much, but Antonio Brown spoke openly during the during when he was a free agent. He said he, he would love to go to Baltimore. I understand he would have been maybe a problem, and maybe there he would have been different if he wouldn't have gone Tampa Bay. But I think if I was the Ravens, I would have tried to pull a sign him. And plus you get maybe a dig at the Steelers. Like I thought they should have just, you know, signed him, but they didn't. It just, they got to find him that legitimate receiver. I don't think, I think Hollywood Brown's solid, but he's not a number one. He's a number two. Mark Andrews is a tight oh, end. Yeah. So, I mean, we'll end up seeing what happens, but um, uh, before we, let me run this, let me, let me run this one by you. If you don't mind real quick. A guy that's sitting out there that I thought, man, this would really help Lamar Jackson out. He's just a vet. He's tough. Uh, number one, number two, debatable. But sitting out there as a free agent is a guy like Golden Tate. Oh, yeah. Who's just uh, he's just a reliable guy that when, when Lamar Jackson is scrambling. So, yeah, I, I just want to say I completely agree with you. I think that Lamar needs, needs that. And, and Bateman will be a really good player, I think. But, again, maybe a vet. At this stage in the game, I mean, they're so close to Super Bowl status. Yeah, I think Golden Tate's a solid guy. I mean, he was good in Detroit. I mean, a lot of people, when they signed yeah. him back in 2014, they thought, oh, that's a bad signing. They overpaid him. He was a nice receiver to Calvin Johnson because I think that year, Johnson was hurt a little bit, and Golden Tate was a nice option for Stafford. And I think he had over 1,000 yards along with Calvin Johnson. So Golden Tate would be a nice signing. Yeah. I totally forgot about him because he was with the Giants last year. So, um yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. He plays the middle, plays the middle of the field when Lamar's scrambling out of trouble. Uh, you could, you could see him looking for a guy like a Golden Tate who's, who's got all the, 
all the experience to be able to sit down and open zones and pockets and really help Lamar out. So uh, I really like Lamar Jackson. I am concerned that that Harbaugh, I would have gone out and got just the world's best passing coach humanly possible and gotten him a number one to really help him out. Yeah, exactly. Um, again, I want to talk about the Giants and football team, but I think we're running out of time. But again, thanks for Got coming it. on. And do you want to say anything before we uh, before we end the interview? No, it's been fantastic. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate the invite. Enjoy your podcast. Listen often. Uh, you can find us at gridironicon.com or the Gridiron Icon podcast on all the usual places, Spotify, Apple, and whatnot. But appreciate coming on and talking ball with another uh, – Football geek. I love it. Yep. All right. Again, thanks for coming on. Don't forget to check out the Gridiron, Gridiron Icon podcast host, Stacy Bauman. Again, thanks for coming on, Stacy, and have a wonderful day. Thank you, sir.